So let's talk phone, shall we? What place in your house has the best coverage? Can switching hands help you get a better signal? And how can a durian help you charge your gadget? Let's find out how to get the most out of your cell phone. Metal filing cabinets and solid furniture, fridges, sculptures, or other massive design pieces all get in the way between you and the phone signal. Moving them into corners can work miracles. Large houseplants are also an obstacle for good reception. There is plenty of water in them, and it eats up the signal. You can type your zip code on a special reception website to find out where the cell towers are in your area. Then, you can simply move to the right side of the building that's closest to the tower. Moving to the upper floors also helps. Simply opening the windows can help you boost reception. If yours are coated with energy-efficient material, it's blocking the signal as well. Spots by the windows in general always have better reception, unless that window opens into a brick wall of the other building, of course. You could get technical and buy a cell phone signal booster or network extender. If everyone around you has good reception and it's just your problem, oh, take your gadget to the phone doctor to see if the internal antenna has been damaged. Danish scientists tested 26 popular phone models and found out iPhones and most of the others perform better when held in the right hand. Samsungs, on the contrary, are more productive in the left hand. Your body somehow interferes with the phone signal, and manufacturers should pay attention to it when positioning the phone antennas. Plastic-based smartphones allow radio waves to pass through with minimal signal loss. They also have some other benefits. Plastic gives freedom to phone designers to experiment with shapes, sizes, and colors. Plastic phones are nearly impossible to break even if you drop them. They're also lighter and cheaper to produce. What kind of phone do you have? Metal, plastic, glass, maybe ceramic? Let me know in the comments below. You have no or close to no signal at all at supermarkets. Any of them is essentially a warehouse made of steel and concrete with many refrigerated areas, which means even more metal. Even a strong signal can't pass through all those materials. The only way it gets in there is through frequently opening doors from a cell tower nearby. Concerts, sport events, festivals, parades, and even a busy road in rush hour also lack mobile reception because of technical issues. When too many phones are trying to send and receive signals from nearby cell towers at the same time, they overload the network. Even if you turn on maximum screen brightness on a sunny day, you won't be able to see a thing. When your display is in the sun, it's emitting light and reflecting sunlight at the same time, so it's ruining the contrast. Other gadgets, like GPS navigators, trade color quality for better visibility. That's why you can see a clear picture on them even in direct sunlight. First-generation touchscreen smartphones needed outside protection from scratches, chips, and cracks. Today, smart screens are strong enough on their own. Unless you spend a lot of time at the beach or drop your phone on concrete every now and then, you are good without a screen protector. Clumsy. It's not the amount of megapixels in your phone's camera, but their size that affects image quality. A 12-megapixel cam can take pictures that put a 48-megapixel one to shame. The surface of your phone camera sensor has a separate area for each pixel. The more pixels, the smaller each of the areas will be and the lower the image quality. Lens quality also matters a lot. Lens type and quality are also the reason you don't often look like yourself in selfies. Wide-angle lenses, for example, make your face and nose look bigger. Tell me about it. Newer phones with portrait mode selfies change and beautify your face by default. Ooh, that's a good thing. Hey, some of us need more help than others. Speaking for myself, of course. Front-facing cameras were originally designed for video calling. Even with all the progress and improvements, they aren't still nearly as good as cameras on the back of the phone. Making them equally good would boost phone prices like crazy. Plus, they'd take up too much space on your phone. It's totally safe to keep your phone right next to a credit card. Your gadget does have a magnetic field, but it's nothing like a fridge magnet, so it won't demagnetize the card. You can't remove phone batteries anymore for your own good. First of all, they used to make the gadget more bulky and less stylish and appealing. Second, smaller inbuilt batteries gave more room for cool extra features. 
They also let manufacturers experiment with shape and not have to stick to rectangular phones. Finally, they made waterproof phones possible because the crucial parts of your phone are safely sealed. If you have an original charging device, you can safely use your phone while it's plugged in. It can only give you a shock if something's wrong with the charger's insulation, and that happens to fake gadgets. It's totally normal for your phone to warm up during charging because heat energy is transferring from the charger to the phone. If the heat is becoming too extreme, though, try taking off the phone cover, stop any downloads in progress and background running apps, or put your phone into airplane mode. 4G doesn't use more data than 3G. It downloads things way faster but uses the same amount of data 3G would. This can make you want to use more data, but that's a psychological, not a technical factor. Switching the phone off and then on again to save some power isn't the best idea, as the whole on and off process eats up a lot of battery and you're likely to turn it back on to a blank screen. Instead, switch to airplane mode that will disable Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, and the constant searching for signal, and you should be good for a while longer. Manufacturers tried solving the blue light problem with a warm-toned night mode. Researchers argued that yellowish light can be even worse, as it makes your brain think it's daytime. So, the best you can do is limit the time you spend looking at the phone screen before bed, no matter what color it is. You're more likely to run out of battery in no time in cold weather. This happens because charging relies on chemical reactions. Your phone battery is packed with ions that keep traveling from one pole to another. Cold weather stops or slows them down, and the battery thinks they left while it's still full of them. You don't really need a phone with more RAM unless you're constantly working in 4-5 to five apps at the same time. An average RAM is perfectly compatible with the latest operating systems, so your phone will be running just fast enough and you don't have to pay crazy money for extra memory. Researchers from the University of Sydney found out that durian, a big smelly fruit, has special powers of storing huge amounts of energy. Its flesh can be transformed into a supercapacitor to provide you with cheap energy and charge your gadget at lightning speed. Now, if they can just do something about the smell. Phones are getting more and more expensive with every new model for several reasons. New and more complex features means more costs on research and development and more expensive new materials. As there are more phone manufacturers now than at the start of the cell phone era, they have to compete for rare materials and components, and their prices rise. Of course they do.